Hello, this is Daedalus with Nerds and Stuff, and today we'll be finishing up that Deathwing Terminator by taking this boring old base from this to this. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is just cover up those little peg holes. So just doing that with a piece of scotch tape. Normally I use masking tape, but I couldn't find mine. Then we're going to take some of this Viva Transparent, which is like a sealant. Uh, we're building a crackle base for this. So the first thing you need to do is seal it off on something that has a real hard, like, bright shine to it. It ends up working better. Uh, this comes as like a two-part kit. You get the shiny stuff, and then you get the crackle stuff, which is this stuff. Um, so that takes like two hours to dry. And then you're going to goop a whole bunch of this on, and the thicker you goop it on... Uh, the more dramatic your cracks will be. So if you want really big, deep cracks, you just really splatter it all on. And then I realized, being a dry lake bed, it should probably have some rocks. So we'll just squeeze a couple of these on real quick, so that we can have a little bit of texture that's like partially submerged. Uh, just give it a little bit of character, you know. Something that will still look uh, like it might have actually been in a lake bed. And then we're going to finish glooping this on on the rest of the base. And, you know, don't be conservative with it. Really get it on there so it, the cracks look really good. If it ends up being too dramatic of cracks, uh, you know, in my opinion, you can't have too dramatic because even when I've tried to really mash a ton of this stuff on, it still ends up looking really good. So then, uh, once we make sure that we've smeared all this, you know, across the base, uh, I want to try and build a uniform texture because that surface texture will really be seen... Uh, after it's cracked, it'll still be on the surface. So you can't really see it really well because the light is washing it out. But right now, I'm just trying to build a uniform texture that's not too, kind of, too wavy. You can get away with some of that because you are looking at, like, a lake bed, so water currents. So now that that's dried, which takes 24 hours, we finally have a base we can paint. So I'll just be, uh, taking my dental hook here and kind of figuring out where I want the model to be. Because when I make these cracked bases, I like to pick out a couple of these cracks so it looks like they've been, you know, like picked away, like they might have been caught on something and picked up, or, you know, maybe they just got crushed by something, like a foot. And it helps give it a little more 3D depth to it. So I just pick in some of those out, and then we'll, we'll get those, we'll get a texture for those later, uh, making sure I just have that fit right where I want them still. And I will be going back to that model a lot. So now we're just going to take the crappiest brush I have, whose sole purpose is for putting glue down, and we're just going to put some glue in some places so that we can add a little bit of sand to give it some, like, dirt texture on top. Now for this first application, I did, uh, I watered my glue down too much, and so I didn't have too much that stuck besides that first spot that I really hit. So uh, I had to go and dip some more glue and come back with it. you got to be careful, because if you just come straight out of the bottle, you'll end up with like too much on your brush and then you'll put too much glue where you don't want it to go and stuff. Uh, it's just practice, knowing where you want it to be. So we put that sand down and tap it off and now we've got some texture added to our base. Just a little bit. I mean we still have good texture in a lot of these areas just from the natural flow and uh, so this just adds a little more where it is flat. Now we've primed it, we can get to painting it. So we just primed it black we're going to come up with just a brown. This is the Reaper Driftwood Brown. This is like the next step up in the Reaper Wood series in their browns. So this was lighter. I initially was going to go with the Shield Brown because I just seemed to love that color and paint everything that color. But uh, I decided that with all the brown that's on the model already, I wanted this to be lighter, more sandy, so that the model could really stand out and look different. And where I built up those colors from the shield brown. I was thinking if I just went with the driftwood and then various layers of dry brushing to make it look really dry and cracked and stuff, it would end up with a similar feel, but not too far away from, you know, what it was. So now I'm taking a little bit of Drakenoff Nightshade, actually, and I have thinned this probably like one to three with water. That's one drop of Nightshade to water. And I'm almost just putting a little bit as like shadows. Now, I was doing some reading, and some people said that if you do this with a couple of different colors, it makes your bases look a lot more alive, because nature is very rarely uniform. So now I'm coming through with some sepia, same kind of thinning,
to try the same thing, just give it a little bit of color variation. I didn't really care for how this turned out, actually. It, it just kind of looked weird. I definitely liked how the, the nightshade went, though. That looked good. So now we're coming up with uh, just Agrax straight out of the bottle. This is just to really darken it up and really make it look dirty, like dried, you know, lake bed earth, and to get in those crevices and make sure that anything that might have been missed by the primer and whatnot is at least got some dark on it. And while we wait for that to dry, we can actually work on another piece. Now this is just a pine needle I picked up off the ground outside. I'm measuring it against the Terminator, and just grabbing a couple pieces, breaking it off. I was like, you know, this kind of looks like a weird desert plant. So we're just going to take the X-Acto knife and flare out the edges here, just making real light cuts to kind of splinter it. Almost like if you smashed a toothpick, you'd kind of get the same splintering effect. I kind of want it to look like some kind of dried up fern or something. I don't know. It's an alien planet. Who knows? Some kind of desert-like, old, dried up uh, plant life, you know? And this is one of those things that's like, kids, if you're under 18, get a parent, because razor blades are sharp. Um, otherwise, be careful, guys, because if you slip, you will cut yourself. But that flare, I think, makes it look a lot better. We'll save that for later. So now that it's dry, we can work on some of that dry brushing. So we're just going to come back through with the driftwood brown first. And this is going to be a pretty liberal dry brushing. I always test my dry brushing on my hand first so that I can see if it's putting down too much paint. Um, it ends up looking weird on your skin, but I have found that's a really good test. You know, and that's after I mash off the paint on a paper towel first to make it just so it's in the bristles. Giving it a very generous dry brushing with that original color to make it look really dusty and have a little more color depth to it, honestly. So now we're coming through and I'm taking a couple of steps of this with the aged bone color, just kind of mixing a little bit of brown or middle, little bit of the driftwood brown in with that aged bone, lightening it up, and then I'm hitting the really extreme places with the uh, the aged bone directly. So this will really look like that real fine dust you find on like dried up plains that seems to get on everything and just settle. So now that we've got like the dirt done, we need to paint ourselves some rocks. And I love painting rocks. You know, I got really good at it. It's something I just like to do and I can make look real good. So I like to put rocks in my stuff whenever I can. So we're starting out just with some black. And this is like a little bit of black and the gray liner. So it's an even darker gray liner than usual. And I'm just trying to hit the base of the rocks themselves. Now I am leaving parts of the rock where kind of the, the cracking paint uh, got to because I do want that to still look like the mud used to be up on these rocks and as it dried it pulled away. So now we're coming back with uh, that gray liner and a little bit of the ghost gray mixed in to give kind of a lighter highlight to it. We're just slowly building up kind of the character of these rocks one layer at a time. So I'm hitting some of the broader surfaces. It's almost like we painted the shadows first and now I'm coming back and painting the, uh, the primary parts of the rock. And so we're making sure to get all these forward-facing areas and, you know, like on that middle rock, there's a little divot on the middle on the top board surface that I don't want to paint because that little divot gives it some character. So now we're coming through with more ghost gray cut in and we're just going to kind of keep doing that for some layers. We're just hitting the real spiky edges, the sharpest points where like the most erosion and wear would take place. These will be the cleanest parts of the rock, the brightest. And then after we get done with this, we actually do this like, um, I call it like a splatter technique, where I just kind of mash the bristles down, and I don't know why I did this with my nice new brush, but I guess I'm just insane or something. And this helps give the rock like a, a random texture, because when you mash that brush down, it, the bristles will kind of all spread out and go in different directions, and they won't always leave like lines of paint. They'll leave like spattered bits. And so I find it really gives a cool natural texture now I'm coming back with a little more of that Drakenoff Nightshade mix from before. I really liked how it gave those shadows around the rocks, so I wanted to... Uh, a lot of those kinds of little details we did got washed out when we put the Agrax in. So I wanted to make sure that we got those shadows still. So now we're about to put our model on, but uh, because of how we built this base, we don't really have room for that mounting peg. I left it on so that... I kind of knew we'd get to this point, but I left it on so that I'd have something else for the blue tack to hold on to while I painted it. But now... 
we don't need it anymore. So we're just going to clip that and make sure we have a flat surface. And then we need to take our pin vise and drill ourselves our mounting hole. So just doing some test fits, seeing if I like where that, right where the pin is going to go through. And then we'll just be boring through. Now, on second thought, looking back at this, I should have picked a spot where two large surfaces cracked out so that it would have helped hide the pin better. That, and as I started to drill in, uh, the little piece of this crackle paint where I, for whatever reason, decided to drill right through the middle of, ended up coming loose. So I ended up getting that tacked down after the fact, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I have the luxury of sharing that hindsight with you guys, so learn from me. Okay, that's why I'm here. So now that we've got the hole, we're just going to trim up that pin, because we have too much poking through. And just had a little bit of white, wanted to make sure that that was a piece that I had drilled and not something I missed painting. See, this is, I'm struggling with that paint, trying to get it through, because it, it's loose now. So now I had some trouble with this uh, old glue. It's time for me to refresh my glue supply. <laughs> it has dried out a bit, and in fact it kind of gooped and dried too fast. So I ended up with a little bit of a white string um, that I didn't see until it had dried going across my base. You can see it right there, coming off of that left foot where the pin was. And uh, I ended up getting that off later, just kind of picking it out with the pick. But uh, keep an eye on your glues, you know? You never know when they're suddenly going to dry out on you or go bad. I have, mine took me by surprise, and as you can see me struggling, uh, we <laughs> I really should have replaced these sooner. And while the glues don't necessarily have an expiration date, they do have a shelf life. Because even my backup glue was having troubles too. So normally I'll use the real nice super glue, and I save this Loctite cheap stuff for like just real cheap work. You know, just putting things together real crudely. But uh, I even had trouble with that, so... I have since refreshed my entire super glue supply, so don't be afraid. Uh, then we're coming through with that accelerant so that I can work on other things and not have to wait for the glue to dry. And we still have that, that white kind of feeler there. You know, I mostly use that accelerant for my own peace of mind. Uh, once I was painting and I had some super glue that I thought had dried but it hadn't yet, so I ended up getting it on the bristles of my brush and really kind of messed that brush up. So now whenever I have a surface that I'm going to be painting soon, I'll always hit it with that accelerant just to make sure that that glue is dry before I paint. Just one of those lessons learned. You can see I was finally able to scrape off that little white string. And now we're going to glue on our little plant thing we made from the pine needle. So just got some super glue on the back of it. And I would have liked to get the accelerant in here. But instead, we're just going to push it down with a toothpick and hold it in place until that dries. I always try and use things from nature, and when I do, I like to leave them as is. I, I don't like to paint them that often, because I can't paint as well as nature can. So if I can take something already existing, like these pine needles, that fit into the situation and use them, I will, and I'll just put them on afterwards, because I think they look better that way. So I'm just taking some kind of flocking uh, these are tufts put it going in just to give it a little bit of fuzz to make it look a little more barren and dried out like maybe life has tried to exist here since the water dried up but hasn't been doing too well I mean there's always desert plants and stuff just give the base a little more character and now I'm just taking a little of these to make real stringy grass like plants that are just like barely there because they're just like barely surviving and I'm taking these, and they're having a real hard time standing up, so I'm actually gluing them and wedging them in the little cracks. Which, I guess, is more of a natural thing. I mean, the seeds would land in the cracks and have a better chance at growing there. But it also gives me an anchor point for my glue, which I desperately needed. So I've taken these tufts, and these ones are a little wider. So what I've done is i folded them onto themselves a couple of times to make them thicker, and also make them stand up more. So that's why... Uh, when I initially pulled them out, they were all flat, like the ones in front, but after I've folded them and get the glue on, once the glue dries, it'll hold them in place, and they won't, uh, they won't spread out again. And then I get these little sharp tufts. So now we're just going to paint the, uh, the lip of the base here. We're just coming in with the pure black, just my usual taste, and I have made sure that this is pure black and not gray liner and making sure that I get any hairs or stray uh, fibers from the tufts coming through because sometimes they, they'll they like hang on and just get really stringy and when you place them in 
place. Sometimes the glue that binds them together isn't always at like the primary point. So you'll get these little stragglers that are glued to like extended pieces that uh, you just sometimes have to trim up your tufts. That's, that's the lesson to be learned here. So just going nice and smooth, getting that taken care of, get that nice even base, making sure not to encroach too much on that lovely dried mud that we've made. Now we're just going to put it back in the vise so that I can make sure all the glue is dried really well before I seal it. And uh, once it's sealed, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, we've got this Deathwing Terminator in a cracked mud base. And he's all done and good to go, ready to hit the table. So that's pretty much it for today. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I see them. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. And as always, until next time, happy painting.